We took a week off, but we are back grading your dynasty football teams. <laughs> Come now, on. if you want your dynasty team to be considered, real simple, join our Discord with the link in the description and send your screenshots of your team in the Dynasty Team Grades text channel. We look through it every week and we try to find a team that we feel like we can help. We're helping out Jacob today, or at least I hope we're going to help out Jacob today. I hope. A little context, this is a 12-team Dynasty PPR. Tight end premium is, is 0.5, so it's 1.5 per reception for tight ends. He says, I have absolutely no idea what direction I should go with my team. Am I bound for last slash middle of the pack? Any advice would be really appreciated. Uh, thanks. So you can now see Jacob's team that he's drafted. And I don't want to say that this is one of like the harder ones that we've had, but it's it's one of those where you truly need to choose a direction. And yeah, I don't exactly. know that there is a wrong way all in or like a punt. But to me, the tough part about this team, and we'll go position by position, is the running back room and the two flex spots. Agreed. And 100% agreed. With that in mind, I think you can compete this year, but I think you're right. I think you're going to be end up being in the middle of the pack. I imagine a lot of other teams out there likely have vets in those spots, like a Keenan Allen, like mm -hmm. a Mike Evans or Aaron Jones or Kamara, Fournette, a Sutton, a Brandon Cooks. Something. And you've got Austin Hooper, Rondell Moore. So to me... I think you can compete, but again, we're not trying to get third. We're not trying to get second. We're not trying to get fourth or fifth or even make the playoffs. Exactly. We want to win it all. Exactly. So I am very open to a one-year punt and offering that advice. Do you feel the same way? I, I do feel the same way, and I actually kind of brought two different perspectives, and I okay. wanted to go the opposite way that you did because I wanted to bring him more, just more. You know, if you were going to do mm -hmm. win now, I'm happy to talk about a futuristic. Okay. If, you know, so like, we'll we'll offer both perspectives. Uh, uh, yeah, I offer okay. let's offer both perspective and just give him kind of some value on both sides. I think that would be really helpful. I like um, it. I'll I'll bring the perspective of a one year punt. You'll mm -hmm. bring the perspective of a win now, and then whatever you can achieve, you can achieve. Agreed. Let me just say from the beginning, we haven't got to the running back position, but I can tell we might disagree because Cam Akers is there. <laughs> That's a conversation for a position mm -hmm. after the quarterback. Let's start with the quarterback, yeah. Justin Herbert. Again, I'm bringing a one year punt. Not to be touched. Doesn't no. matter what. You no. don't touch Justin Herbert in a rebuild. You don't touch him in a win now. You don't touch him ever. Uh, I mean, just don't touch him. Just um, <laughs> look. And if you're doing a one-year punt, I don't, don't think you. <laughs> I don't think you need to sell Derek Carr. But I'm personally very open to it because mm -hmm. of the value he currently equates to other young quarterbacks that I think could be really good for a one-year punt. So. Mm -hmm. When I talk about quarterbacks that I think you could sell Derek Cor Carr for, Cor, Cor. Um, Derek Core, there's a couple guys that I think could be really, really good for you to do a one-year punt. Like Deshaun Watson right now, in the community's eyes, is ranked almost the same as Derek Carr. That is like, talk about dream one-year punt trade right now. Right. Moving right. Derek Carr for Deshaun Watson, who has, as a starter, has only finished top five. And in the last three years as a starter, 100 total touchdowns. You can think what you want about him ethically, but as a football player, he's incredible. Agreed. So, I mean, I feel like if you can make this move and get Deshaun Watson, you instantly need to do the one-year punt. Right. Um, another player I wanted to bring up, Justin Fields. Very similarly ranked as well. Love. And I feel like Justin Fields, we both love him. We believe in him. If you're out there and you don't, I understand. But we believe that he's going to take a next step this year. But 2023, which is when you're going to compete if you're doing a one-year punt, there's going to be more options around him. They're going to build around him next year. The talent is there. I mean, imagine Justin Fields in San Francisco right now. That's why we're so high on Trey Lance. Yeah. So yeah. if you can do one of those two, Deshaun Watson, Justin Fields, I feel like you're primed for a one-year punt. Another option I wanted to throw out was Trevor Lawrence. I believe in him. Others don't. So if you can do one of those three trades, I feel like a one-year punt's on the cards. Now, that was from a one-year punt perspective. You're bringing it from a win now. Are you making any moves as a win now? A uh, win now, obviously, you can't make any moves. One thing I want to say about your quarterback position, if you are win now and you, you had to accommodate for these bye weeks and you don't have that right now with a QB3, um, I'm not trying to send... I mean, you can do a, a win now perspective and try to send a third for 
a Daniel Jones or something just for a week. But at the same time, do we really want to do that? Yeah. Um, no. So there's no point. I think like you probably just got to take the L that week, um, depending on it. And hopefully with the moves that you can make, you can put somebody really good in that super flex spot. And hopefully he has a spike week. But at the moment for me in the win now, pers- yeah. uh, win now perspective, you're keeping Carr uh, and Justin Herbert. Yeah, I like it. And the good thing is that Carr and Herbert's buys are, are not on the same week as exactly. well. Exactly. All right, moving on to the running back position. Again, I am talking one-year punt, and I've been saying it all offseason. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I owe any time it comes up, I just have to say my thoughts on Cam Akers. Mm-hmm. I've been telling people to sell him all offseason. The unfortunate thing is that I think, again, like we haven't seen the season yet, so I'm not going to say I'm right, but the community is starting to change as well. He was RB13. He's now RB20 in the community's eyes. Yeah. But I still have some ideas on what you could sell him for according to the community's value. Um, again, that's not gonna, RB13 and 20 is not going to help you now, but here's an idea, okay? Mm-hmm. Can you get literally any 23 first for Cam Makers? I'll take the shot. I'll right. take the shot on a 23 first for next year. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't want to make that pick, you have the flexibility to trade that pick. And just because you're trading with someone who might, like if it's a mid first, it could be early. You don't know what's going to happen this year. So I'll take any first. How about, and this is literally ideal. I talk about ideal trades for a one-year punt. I told you Deshaun Watson is like incredible for a one-year punt. Well, Cam Akers, how about Ken Walker? The most ideal (laughs) one-year punt move here. Ken Walker currently the RB19. Cam Akers currently RB20. And I think Cam Akers has more like home name, like more value in the community. So I think you might be able to do that, but you don't have to actually go running back, okay? I saw you had a couple first round picks in 2024. So next year, you will be able to manipulate those picks and get running backs if you need. Cam Akers right now, equal value in the community to Jerry Judy, Traylon Burks. So I think those are also guys that I would be willing to go out and get and thus next year improve my flex positions and then use my first round picks in 2024 to to build the running back room. Um, And look, when we talk about deals that you can do, I just feel like we have to have a disclaimer that says not everything's going to work. (laughs) Your leagues are not going to accept every single trade. Start a (laughs) conversation. See what's possible. I mean, we have to go through like, you know, five to 10 counters before we get trades done. It doesn't always, it's not a perfect math and not everything's going to work out. Some players are going to devalue players in leagues. Some guys are going to overvalue players in some leagues, but these are starting points. Um, The other thing I would say is for Cam Akers, the last thing that you could do is if you can get an early 2024 first, like a team that's clearly rebuilding next off season, that 2024, 24 first could be really high. I'd be willing to look at that as well because right now, 24 firsts don't carry the value of what they will next year. Think about how important a 23 first is right now. Next year, a 24 first is going to carry a lot of value and again, a lot of flexibility to build your team. You get three 24 firsts, you can definitely build a good running back room with that. Um, Kareem Hunt, in a one-year punt scenario, you just have to wait for his value to rise. It's not the time to sell right now. Yeah. Um, hope that he gets traded to a different team or he's still you know, the RB2 there or Nick right. Chubb gets injured or whatever. So Kareem Hunt, I want to sell in season. Cam Akers, try the deals that I said if you're doing a one-year punt. That's all the moves I want to make in the running back room if I'm doing a one-year punt. Everything else I'm fine with. Um, okay. You know, Herbert's fine to keep. Uh, you know, if Monty doesn't stay. That's great. Uh, Algier, if he gets a role, that's great. So, that's great, yeah. Agreed. Same with Rashad White, if, if Lenny leaves. So that was a one-year punt perspective. You're doing a win-now perspective. Win-now perspective in the running back room. And it, it is a bit difficult here because it's not it's not much. But one thing I want to say is, like, I am a Cam Akers believer. Even if he gets 60, 40, 50, 50, I think there could be some value. Maybe he gives you a minimum of 10, 12, maybe even 15 points on a good day. Uh, it is tough to kind of be on Cam Akers' side right now because of all the reports coming out. But one thing I do want to say, like Zach did mention, you do have a 24 first. You have two 24 first. Mm-hmm. If you're going to try and win now, why not try and go get out, go and get someone like a, a Saquon, a Ma, I mean, a Saquon, a Dalvin. I mean, I know it doesn't sound sexy. It doesn't sound like something that we want to do. But for winning now, yeah. this is exactly what we need to do. Can we go out and get a Joe Mixon? Can we go out and get somebody 
and while using that 24 first. And if you can just spend that 24 first on any top tier running back, you know, maybe a top 15 running back with that 24 first, maybe you have to throw in some little pieces. I think having, you know, Cam Akers and once again, a Saquon, a Dalvin, an Alvin, some of these guys that you can get right now Mm -hmm. and try to win now. Um, Obviously a lot of risk because, you know, Saquon, yeah. we don't know if there's going to be injury. Alvin, we don't know if he's going to get suspended. But that's the point of doing win now. You, you're just putting all your chips in one basket. Can you do that and get a running back and still keep Kareem Hump as a flex option? Because I think yeah. what happens there is that you get one of these guys, once again, Saquon, Alvin, Dalvin, put them in your running back position, and then Kareem Hunt fills out better more in your flex spot, right? So mm-hmm. that's really the thought process in the running back room. Um I can't really think of anyone else. I, really, people that I like, to be honest with you, that you could probably get right now is a David Montgomery and still stay young. A Ramondre Stevenson still you stay you young. Think you can send a twenty-three second for Monty? You think that's possible? I I, I think I, you might be able to do that. I personally wouldn't do that, but if there's somebody out there that you can get for right. Monty, who I'm a massive believer in, I think that's fantastic. I think another a good buy low option right now. Uh, actually, I was gonna say Brian Robinson, but they're still in question of when he is gonna return. Yeah. Can you get someone like a a Devin Singletary, a Lenny potentially, um, mm. to come to come James in just Conner. for the one year? Yeah, like somebody, James Conner, one of these guys to come in and try to win, go have a decent kind of fluctuation here with Cam Makers, who probably, mm. once again, with the with the way the community is seeing it, it's not going to be a home run guy, but it's probably going to be a 50-50, once again, 10 to 15 points type of games and then have a home home run hitting guy like a Lenny, Dalvin, Alvin, Saquon. Hopefully these guys can bounce back. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's what I would do in the running back room and keep Kareem Hunt. Use that 24 first to your advantage right now. Yeah. All right. So that's the perspective from a win now. Let's go wide receivers. I'll bring mm-hmm. you again the one-year punt perspective. Uh, okay. T. Higgins, Jamison Williams, Higgins. Elijah Moore. These are the pillars of your wide receiver room. Fantastic. Okay? What we have to hope is that we see a breakout from Elijah Moore this year. Mm-hmm. And then Jamison Williams, if you're going to do a one-year punt, it's incredible that you can put him on your taxi. Like, that's incredible. Like, he's not going to help you at all, which is what you want in a one-year punt. <laughs> right. Um, I'm open to keeping Allen Robinson. I'm actually really open to keeping Allen Robinson in a, in a one-year punt. Younger than Cooper Cup. Mm-hmm. has the contract mm-hmm. connected to a team that throws the ball a ton with an offensive mind who is potentially the best right now in the NFL and Sean McVay. But he's a my guy this year. He's my RB, he's my wide receiver 13 in redraft. And I imagine you could get some incredible trade offers for him in season. So there will come a point where, bro, if, if you're getting like Cooper Cup type value, then you have to trade him in this one year punt. But right. at the same time, I don't think you need to trade him straight away. So hold on to him for now. Stash Rondale, Donovan People Jones, and McKenzie. And then in season, you need to look to sell Devontae Parker and Zay Jones because Parker and Zay Jones, they could easily have weeks where they finish, you know, in the top 24 at their position. And if they do that a couple weeks in a row, you could easily find little sneaky opportunities to sell them. Agreed. So that's what I would be doing right now in the wide receiver room. Again, T. Higgins, Jameson Williams, Elijah Moore. They don't move anywhere. Right. I don't think they move anywhere regardless, but like, especially not in a one year punt. Um, Allen Robinson, uh, you know, again, let's just see. Like, you could get really good trade value for him in season, but mm-hmm. I think you're really good so far on the wide receiver room. Yeah, wide receiver rooms is, is fantastic. And the one thing I want to hit on is the flex option, right? So the mm-hmm. one thing I said yeah. is to move down and keep Kareem Hunt. So you have T. Higgins, Allen Robinson, Elijah Moore. And you have Kareem Hunt in that flex. Like Zach was saying, Devontae Parker, if he does have a good year, have these spikes weeks, yeah. he can he could be a guy that you can fit mm-hmm. in your flex every single Agreed. week. But you also want to upgrade in somehow, some way. So you can now there's two ways as I was thinking about it. You can keep Kareem Hunt and put Devontae Parker in your flex, or what you can do put Devontae Parker in your flex and then upgrade from a Kareem Hunt. Once again, probably not the best time to sell Kareem Hunt, but can you get you know, can you package a Kareem Hunt in a second to a guy and get a Brandon Cooks? Can right. you get a, a Jahan Dotson? Can you get and mind 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 to try to either keep young or stay in the middle there? Can you get a Amari Cooper? You know, Amari mm-hmm. Cooper could be somebody very very interesting. Um, Alan Lazard in a win now perspective here yeah. could be a great flex option. He's a my guy this year. Put him in your flex option. 
try not to give you're still keeping your 23 first and your 24 one of your 24 first you just got to move the pieces a little bit you know and mm-hmm. jame jmo if he does come back before the playoffs and he with the talent that he is he can probably pop him in your flex at some point you yeah. know if he does take off but these are the guys that i'm thinking about you know I don't, I can I say the, one more name that came that came to mind just because yeah. like I'm obsessed with them, Christian Kirk. I was gonna say Christian Kirk, but I felt like it will be too much. I mean, it Christian Kirk will be right too now the much community to has him as a wide receiver forty three. Right, right, which thought, is is equal to a second round pick. Right, so I thought it would be too much, but yeah, that was a guy that I had on my radar. I was yeah. I said to Christian Kirk, Alan Lazard, I said Jahan Dotson, mm-hmm. Brandon yep. Cooks. I mean. You can even go Kadarius Tony if you want. I said Amari Cooper. These are all the guys. Hunter that you can, Renfro, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Hunter Renfro. If you if you really want, um, some of these guys that you can get right now. Look, this could be a, a massive risk. But can you get DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah. You know, right, massive, once right, again, yeah, massive risk. But can you get DeAndre Hopkins here? Mm-hmm. Let him sit out for six weeks, and then have Devontae Park, and then Hopkins come back, right. and then you're kind of. You're kind of chilling there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Your, your your bench is going to be bad. You're not going to have anyone to flex or yeah. put in. Yeah. But that's the whole point of win now. You're punting it. Exactly. You understand when you're going to win. You understand when you're going to lose. And you're always only trying to make the playoffs. And I think that would, that's just good. You just need to get one guy. Just one guy that can fit in that flex. Because if you can get that top end court running back, put Kareem Hunt in your flex or flip him out or sell him for another two wide receivers... I think that yeah. would be a good option for you, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, with going win now, I know you you keep saying this is risk. That's just the reality, guys. Yeah. I mean, you go win now, it is always a huge risk because you're mm-hmm. going, you're putting all the chips in the table. There's probably other people there who want to win now as well. So, yeah. by the way, it's, it's, other names, right, it's gonna be, just yeah. to throw out there once again, uh, Michael Gallup is it could be nice. Adam Thielen could be. By nice. the way. Michael Gallup, uh, just a heads up in a rookie draft. Third round pick value this yeah, year. I mean, I traded third round pick for Michael Gallup. Come on, I mean, if you can get some of these guys on your team right now in a win now perspective, and they take off, and you send a third, you can flip. You can flip these guys so fast, yeah. so easily, and and get some and get that value back, and still be a win now. And then with the futuristic picks. I mean, it could it can literally be a win win for you, depending on how you navigate it. It's gonna be tough, but I'm I'm so excited for you actually. <laughs> the tight end position, this is why this is why I found it really hard to really commit to a strategy here because in a half PPR in a tight end premium. premium format with yeah, Mark Andrews. Twenty five, that's what I'm I saying, mean, right? you have such an advantage over your league. Massive. Um I don't know what to tell you. Don't do anything. If you do I mean, a punt, don't do anything. If you do a win now, don't do anything. Like, you're fine Surely, here. Mark Andrews, I wonder if we can pull this up somehow. Tight end premium with the extra point five. Mm-hmm. surely is a top top three finishes in wide receivers. Yeah, I can figure that out real fast. Yeah, top three talk. finishes in, in wide receivers, potentially. And I think if you can keep Mark Andrews, uh, first of all, you're not selling Mark Andrews, whether it's futuristic or yeah. win now, okay? So you're not moving him whatsoever. You do have Austin Hooper as a flex option, when he does, or not flex option, but as a plug-and-play option, which I think is great. He's a good sleeper right now. Um, just in fantasy perspectives, I mean, he's going to need to be utilized in Tennessee. Roberto Woods, Traylon Burks, he could be a good guy for okay, Ryan so last Tannehill year, in the middle of the, on the field. Last year, if Mark Andrews had 1.5 points per reception, he would have been the wide receiver two, equivalent wide receiver two right behind Cooper Cup. Sheesh. Um, he would have been actually 30 points clear of Devontae Adams on the year um, as who, who's the current wide receiver two. And this is, so, point, this is point 0.5 or? Mm-hmm, 1.5. Okay. Oh, this is 0.5 so, though, it says. Yeah, which means you add 0.5 onto the onto the one, 1. Ah, 1.5. Okay, okay, okay. I was a bit confused there. Okay. No, you're good. Um, but yeah, so even in a half point premium like advantage, which you know, one point five per reception, Mark Andrews. Will he do it again though? We don't know. We don't know. Um, we don't know. <laughs> but anyway, two perspectives. That was fun. Let us know if this was helpful. Uh let us know if this was helpful. And if you guys are watching what moves you might make, but I think you got a couple different options here. Mark Andrews really yeah. gives you flexibility. 100%. And Great wide receivers good, as well. The good thing is, like, next year, if you do if you do a one-year punt, 
you already have 224 first and they will be so much more valuable next year so Agreed. either way you know you, you're gonna have a, a really good um team moving forward i give you an a minus that's a great spot a couple moves you can make and i think you could make it uh uh, a little bit better this time next year. Yeah, for me, B plus. I really like this team. Once again, I, I do believe it can go either way. You just got to make the right moves at the right time. And um, good luck this year, honestly. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm pumped for you and pumped for the season. It's a fun team <laughs> to kind of play around with. So, mm -hmm. All right, comment down below. Hopefully this was helpful. Joseph. Is that, that's the name, right? Yeah, I think check. so. Joseph. Jacob. <laughs> Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob. Hopefully this is helpful, Jacob. Let us know in the comments below. Huge love. Yo, what's good? Thanks love. for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos. Watch now, it. You can also subscribe. Right now. If you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm -hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.